Right, today we're gonna to be talking about James Proche, the Ravens, um, one of the Ravens uh, receiver picks. He was drafted with the 201st pick in the sixth round by the Ravens, and um, another interesting pick by Baltimore. We needed depth at receiver, and um, he's one of the guys that did not drop a lot of balls in his entire career. I think somebody threw me a stat on Twitter where in four years he may have had nine drops which is, is, is an amazing because he, he played a significant amount of time all four years. Uh, without further ado, let's dive into James Prochet, Southern Methodist University, Dallas, Texas. All right, it's first play. And I took the games from ECU, which he had a, he had a monster game, uh, over 150 yards. Then the second game was from TCU. And so um, TCU, I think, was probably their best defensive team they played. But let's just get into it and, and show you what Prochet brings to the Baltimore Ravens receiving room. Receiving room. This is him at the bottom right here. Good with the hands. Just just a natural catcher. Kind of plucks the ball out the air. It's not real forced. Oop. Caught it and put it away. That fast. It's, it's, his, his, his hands are so soft and he's so confident in his hands that there's not a, a, a hope and a want. It's balls there. Plug it. Plug it. Both hands together. Plug it. And going about your business. It's a good throw too. It's a good ball by the QB. And you get a little yak out of it. Get a little yak out of it. I wondered if he could run routes. But uh, this tape kind of put that wonder in the bed. This is him here. Got him. Got him. Went over the guy's back and went and got it. So there's nothing real nuanced about this route. Just great ball skills. Great ball skills. Great ball skills. The ball is behind the defender. He goes up over the defender, pulls it back to him, and then finishes it. And then finishes. Stickies. You got the real stickies. Now, this is a route right here, buddy. This is a route. This is a route. He's, he's the bottom receiver around here. Come on, close that gap. Stick that foot in the ground like he run the post. Got the guy to open up and chase that. And set the line right down to the curve. Put all that space. That's a great route. Let's see it again in real time. That's a, that's a during a route. Post curl. Boom. Just a sec. Nobody talking to you, Siri. Body much screen right here. Now, let me let it run first. Make sure I'm, I got the right play. Yeah, this is what I want to talk about. All right, so bagging it up. You see, you got this kid showing a little curl or comeback or whatever. But let's talk about what he does wrong. And then I'm going to show you why it's so impressive that he gets this catch. First time, he's already at the bottom of the numbers. Then he takes an outside release. So the DB is using the sideline to work against him. Now look, he's running on the ticks. He's running on the ticks right in front of the hash mark. So he don't, I mean, in front of the sideline. So he don't have a lot of room to work with. The defender is trying to level him off and close him off. Right down here, trying to close him off. Now, how does he get that, that, that much space? I don't know if he threw him by or what, but that's a great job of using your individual toolbox to stay open. And the catch wasn't even contested. So if we go from from let me see, let me get back to it. If we go from there, which they're right here in, in your screen. He's all over him. To here, 
It's not even close. So whatever he used in his toolbox right there to get open, I don't know if it was a throw by, he sat, sat his wrap down, just came back, but whatever he used, good job, because he didn't have a lot of space to work with at all. And obviously him catching the ball is not going to be an issue. This is him right here at the bottom. Nothing new wants about that route. Now, this didn't count. This didn't count, but I just wanted to show you his ability, even being a small guy, to go up and get the ball. A little outside stem. High points it. And this ball is still behind him. High points it again. And just missed get, getting both his feet down. Well, just missed getting his feet down. Because he catches it, but he bobbles it right there. And then they called it incomplete. So if he didn't bobble it, that would have been a touchdown because he got his feet down. The bobble is the reason they didn't give it to him. Down here at the bottom down here. Get that route. Another post curl. I love it. I love it. It needs to look vertical till it ain't. It needs to look vertical till it ain't. Down here at the bottom. Closing that gap. Threading him inside. When he start to bail, sit it down. Sit it down. Sit in that big old gap. Look at it. Sit in the gap. Sit in the gap. And catch, again, catching the ball. It's, it's second nature to him. Second nature to him. Now, what, let me see. All right, this play, let me set the scene right here. They're playing ECU, and it's, I think they have like a four-point lead. Maybe it's like. 51 to 54 or 50 it's something like that this is a high scoring game this is the fourth quarter with like under a minute left it's fourth and three it's fourth and three they don't they don't run the ball they don't they don't do anything that you normally would they don't punt it they throw the ball to crochet fourth and three with less than a minute left get me a first down so we can run this clock out this is him right at the bottom of the screen Footwork. Great foot fire and good separation. And the ball's behind him. The ball's behind him. And the guy's got the inside leverage. And he know he got to get inside. Foot fire, foot fire, square him up. Get him to open that hip. Clap that hand down. Clap that hand down. Just trying to jam it. Now you got it. Just bang on that shoulder and, and cut hard um, cut hard inside. Bang that shoulder right there. Go straight down the line. That's all the separation you need right there. All the separation you need. Accurate quarterback gonna put it on. Now this ball is inaccurate. But he still catches it. Throttles down, catches it, brings it in. First down, TCU wins. I mean not TCU. Uh what's that? Southern Methodist. Southern Methodist wins. Now this is against TCU. And originally, I thought some of these clips were against Gladney because I thought Gladney was number two, but Gladney's number 12. So let's see who these are against. All right, let's run the first play. He's in the slot on this one. And the reason I picked this one because him being a slot guy, just watch how he freezes, freezes this dude. He's running a little out route. He's going to freeze him to where he can't, he's just going to square him up. And then when he break out in his out, he's going to be wide open. That left, that left foot file let the, let this guy know. He don't know if he's going inside, vertical, or out. So he got to be still because he got to protect the inside. Quick out, straight down the line. Easy. And hands are so good. Hands are so good. Balls, balls in his hand turn up field right now. That quick. That much confidence in his hand. Ball in his hand. He hadn't took the jet. Called it. Now he got it. He's just not getting it. Now he's going to turn up field and get something else out of it. They only get about four more yards, but still. Because he could have just rolled this. He could have rolled this. He could have rolled this out. That dude would have jumped it and went pick six. But that little stutter to make him freeze is what gave him the opportunity to be open. That stutter right there. Because right now, he don't know if he's going in, up, or out. He got to freeze and play it. Now you see it out, so now you're gonna try to come on it. It's too late. Too late. 
So he does understand routes. Now this is, he's right here. And I, I picked this play because if we run some kind of option with him, he's basically going to do the same thing to this safety that he did to this linebacker. I think this guy maybe is going to come or whatever. He's going to do something, but not be in the play. But he's going to do the same technique to this DB that he just did to the linebacker. But this time he's going to come in instead of going out. Make the catch. Easy. It's simple. Simple football. This game not that hard if you do it the right way. Now, right now, he don't know where he's going. He can go out, in, but he, he can't go vertical because he's deep on it. But he freezing him right there. Take that foot in the ground, come flat. Simple. That's That would be a good third and short type deal when you're trying to isolate somebody and you know they're probably coming. That's that's perfect right there. That, translate to, that translates to the NFL. And lastly down here, lastly down here, he's up here at the top. A little small guy, but can go get it. Mm, back shoulder. If you put it on him, he's going to get it. Wherever you put it, if it's within his reach, he's going to get it. I think he one of them guys that if he touch my fingers, I'm supposed to catch it. Back shoulder, and that's a great throw. Even better, just body control. Trying to get over top. He can't. Quarterback recognizes it. Stick that foot in the ground, open up. And he come off the ground a little bit and get it. I ain't gonna say he high points it. He didn't have to. But he gave himself room. And the the un not the undeniable, the underrated part of this play is when he catches the ball right here, he immediately turns his back to the DB so he can't knock it out. Immediately. Turns his back to the DB so he can knock it out. Touchdown, SMU. Now, Prochet had a, a ton of catches, a ton of yards, very few drops. And he's going to be a part of a receiver room where a young class of receivers that I'm probably going to come in there with a little edge, a little confidence because they're not known for dropping balls. And some of the receivers that are still there, minus Hollywood, do have drops. So they, as long as he coming in there with that same mentality, attacking the ball, and trusting his hands, he's going to be good. He's going to be good. I can see him, you know, working well like a, in, a, in a Sneed type role or Wes Welker type role. Cause he don't. I don't think he have like long speed, but he got good short area quickness. Cause he take a lot of small steps and can get in and out of his breaks quick. But uh, this is James Prochet from SMU, uh, new receiver, pick 102 in round six for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, one of the most underrated picks in the draft, and probably one of the most underrated receivers coming out of college. And this is Coach Evans with Sydney Tally Films. We got another Ravens pick. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share, and be on the lookout for the next film. See you when I see you. Peace.